Hey, welcome back to the Two Car Garage. I'm Lucas. This is Kurt's Bug, and uh, well, we've got the brackets from uh, air cooled already installed on the back of this chassis, and uh, well, I'm going to explain to you what's going on here and uh, some of the things that I've done as far as this install goes, and well, we'll just kind of see where things go. All right, well, first things first here. So we are going to be running a full air ride on this car. I have chosen to use the kit from Air Cooled because uh, really, uh, after all the ones that I researched, it, it really seems to fit the bill for what we're trying to achieve with this car. Now, in talking with Pete from Air Cooled, he said that you can still maintain heat if you modify the tubes where they enter the body. And, you know, after doing some looking here, um, I think there's going to be some work involved there. Now, I do have all of the work already completed. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step video on how to install this stuff. Because, honestly, if you don't have uh, top-notch fabrication skills, I would recommend you, you hire that job out to somebody. There's quite a bit of work that goes into making all this stuff work. You really want to have some, some pretty good welding skills because... Well, honestly, this is holding up the back of the car, and we don't want anything anything breaking. Now, there's some things that I learned while doing this job. Uh, first off, the kit's pretty nice, but it's not perfect. There were some things we had to account for and make some changes just to get everything to fit the way we wanted it to. I also went and made a few changes just to, well, to make myself feel better, I guess. Another thing I learned about myself is I am crappy at making welds look good. I have no fear in the strength of my welds. They just look really, well, they don't look very good. So don't judge that. Know that things are plenty strong. It's just plenty ugly. Well, before we actually start talking about how I installed all this stuff, let's just jump back in time a little bit, take you over to a bench, and I'll show you all the pieces uh, that I'm using, at least the pieces I'm using today, and uh, just kind of show you what's going on. All right. Here we go. So these are the components that we're going to be using today. You can see I've already got packages opened up. Uh, I've got things already pre-assembled. Uh, Aircool does a really nice job on their packaging. Uh, you can see that they've got everything um, vacuum wrapped here. Uh, so all the heim joints that you need uh, are wrapped up real nice. Uh, there are four uh, right hand thread heim joints and then there are two left hand thread and that's what goes into this uh, lower control arm, I guess we can call it. Uh, and then all, you, know, you see all the nuts and bolts and fittings and stuff all packaged up real nice. So that made it real easy. I just grabbed the packages I needed for this and we were good to go. You can see that I've got the control arm already put together. So I've got the heim joints already threaded in. Um, I did use my own nuts and bolts for now, uh, simply because I didn't want to be running the lock nuts on there that they use because uh, I am going to be taking all this back apart. So when we put this together at the end, uh, we'll use the hardware that, that came in the kit plus the lock nuts and everything will be nice and nice and secure. The brackets here, um, so this will all get welded to the chassis. Uh, the heim joint is going to attach to this guy here and you know I'll explain what's, what's going on with the way things look here once we, once we get to put this on the car. And then finally, we do have the, uh, the airbag, and we will need this just to do some, some test fitting to make sure everything's lined up. And that's about it. This is all we're going to need for today. I don't need the rear shock. Um, I don't need airlines. I don't need the air fittings. None of that stuff is important right now. It's all just going to be getting this stuff welded in. All right, with that stuff out of the way, let's, uh, well, let's go through everything we did to, to get to this point. First thing I did is I went ahead and pulled the torsion bars out of the torsion housing. So now my uh, spring plates are free to move up and down. While I had the spring plates off to remove the torsion bars, I went ahead and notched them. Now the kit from Aircool does include this little template that you lay onto your uh, spring plate. You trace it out, cut that notch, and now we've got the full range of motion that we're going to need in order to lay this car out. Um, I'm not completely finished with the, with the cleanup. I still have to come through and file all the edges. I want to make sure everything's finished up there, but I figured I would do that when I get ready to uh, 
sandblast and paint everything. Once we had the spring plates taken care of, we went ahead and uh, cleaned up the chassis to get everything ready for welding. Now, I, I only cleaned the area that I needed to for the welding process here. I'm not worried about the rest of it right now. We're gonna do a full cleanup on the rest of the chassis when we uh, get ready for paint. In hindsight, uh, I will say this. It would have made more sense if I would have had the chassis already sandblasted. That way I could just weld everything on there and then really just get right into the painting process. I didn't do that, so it's a little more labor on my part. But what we did here is I cleaned off all the old uh, oil and grime and grease that was uh, on a frame horns here. Took a wire brush, wire brushed all of the paint and rust that I could get. After we got everything wire brushed as much as we could, I sprayed everything down with some Ospho. It's just a phosphoric acid. And that does a nice job of uh, chewing up the rest of the rust, gets down into the pores of the metal, the areas you can't reach with the wire brush, and really gives us a nice, nice clean surface to weld to. Now, one thing I should mention before we go too much further into this here. Um, part of my cleanup process and part of my prep process, I went ahead and sandblasted all the areas that I was going to be welding on these brackets. All of, the, all of this new steel from Air Cooled has a, a mill scale on it. Pretty tough stuff. I didn't want to have any, uh, any problems with a, a, a dirty weld joint. And uh, so I just sandblasted about half to three quarters of an inch back from where the weld was going to be just to ensure I had a nice clean edge. Um, I'll tell you that when I did the first side I tried doing it all with just a, a grinder and a, and a flap disc to remove that scale and while the flap disc works it just took way more time than it was worth so um, just hitting it with the sandblaster uh, just sped the whole process up. Now the instructions with the kit are, are pretty good. Again, if you're a fabricator, it's not going to be a, a, a problem. Everything kind of just falls into place. I did watch some of the air-cooled videos, and in fact, I'm going to link to their, uh, to their page somewhere up here in the corner. So you can go check that stuff out and see, see what they're doing. First thing I did is I got the corner plates welded in, and uh, there was a little bit of fitting involved just to make sure it fit the frame horn nice and tight and everything was was lined up where we wanted it to. I went ahead and made sure that uh, each plate was positioned in the exact same spot and then we just got them burned in. Well after I got the corner brackets welded in uh, I went ahead and flipped the chassis over and I added some gussets. Are they necessary? Uh, I'll let you be the judge. It makes me feel a lot better so I went ahead and added them. So for the the gusseting here uh, I just took made some cardboard templates. You can see here's the little corner piece that fits actually in the uh, against the torsion housing out at the end of the plate. And then we got that welded in. And then I also put a, another corner gusset uh, up against the frame horn. Now this chassis originally had these little support wings, I guess we'll call them, that were welded to the frame horn, welded to the torsion tube, and that just kind of helps keep things square. What I've done because the hind joint for the, I guess we'll call it the lower control arm, uh, comes right into where that little, that little plate is. I just cut a notch out, and then once I had everything clearance to where I knew the hind joint was going to fit, I just made a little, little gusset plate here that fits up onto the, onto the frame horn, the little step that's in there, welded that all the way around, and now I've basically boxed in this, this corner. And, you know, honestly, it makes me feel better. Uh, I didn't need to bring it all the way out to the outside of that wing. Uh, there's really no strength there. I, I could have got away with just doing a, another corner gusset, and it would have been just fine. I just thought, you know, having it boxed in is just going to make it look a little better and uh, give me a nice, nice clean install. At this point, uh, with the corner plates all welded in, and I was nice and happy with them, then we went ahead and got going on the upper airbag mount. And this is where we had to do some, some adapting because unfortunately these plates, uh, they're, they're universal for any of the swing axle rear ends and all of these chassis over the years, you know, they made changes to them and things aren't exactly the same. So 
what I ended up doing once I got the top plate positioned correctly, and to do that, I actually had the transmission in here, I had the axles installed, put in the lower control arm, and used that to kind of line things up so I know that my airbag is going to be as, as centered as I could in the slots that are in these plates. Once I got it fit and positioned where I want it, there was still a you know, a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch gap between the upper airbag mount and the shock tower. What I ended up doing to fix that is I just went ahead and again with some cardboard made some templates to fit the shape of the shock tower, cut out a piece of steel, uh, laid that on the top. And I want it on the top because of the the pressure is going to be pushing up on this bag. And then we've got that welded to the shock tower, welded to the upper airbag mount, both top and bottom. And I know that's going to be going to be good and strong. This front bracket, same thing, was a little short, didn't make it all the way to the shock tower. So I also cut a piece of steel to fit the shock tower and matched it to the shape of the uh, front brace. Got that welded in, again, front and back, anywhere I could get it welded. I know that's going to be good and strong. Once we had this front bracket kind of figured out where it was going to lay, the last thing it needed to do was actually fill a gap where the bracket sits on the frame horn. It ended up being just a little bit over an eighth of an inch gap between the uh, bracket and the frame horn. So I just simply took a piece of eighth inch steel, cut it to the width I needed, bent it around the frame horn so it fits nice and tight and then welded that to the frame horn and then my bracket was able to sit right on that welded the bracket to that i know it's going to be it's going to be good and strong now this rear bracket this actually was just fine it's a little too long which is what you want so we had to shorten that got that shape to fit the shock tower uh, i did have to re-radius just a little bit where it sits on the frame horn so with everything fitting now the way we wanted it to, it was really just time to get everything burned in. Now a couple of things I did. On the bottom side of the bracket where the airbag sits, um, I did grind a, a pretty good size V where the two parts meet and I laid a bead of weld into that V and then went ahead and ground that flush. And you can see if we look at it from the underside that I've got a nice flat surface for the airbag to sit on. So I know that it's it's got a good weld, it's going to be good and strong, and uh, also, I, again, I took the time to make sure that everything's nice and flat so we don't have any, any problems with mounting the airbag. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video here that, well, my welds are, are pretty ugly because, well, honestly, I'm just, not, I'm just not good at making pretty welds. Uh, I think a contributing factor to that is the fact that I actually ran out of welding gas and I was doing this on a weekend and I really just needed to get the job done. Uh, so I just switched back over to a flux core wire. Um, there's nothing wrong with using flux core. You can get good, strong welds with that. The issue is it's a really messy uh, process. What I did to help kind of make my cleanup a little bit easier, I do have some, uh, some anti-splatter spray. And I sprayed everything down with that kind of kind of helped make the cleanup a little easier, but still was a, uh, well, again, a pretty messy process. Now, another thing that needed to be addressed, which honestly really wasn't a big deal, uh, this here is the little tab that the uh, splitter for the rear brake line actually attaches to. So your rear brake line comes in from the front of the car, goes into the T, and then goes off to the two rear wheels. Well, that sits right down on the bottom of the frame horn, uh, and that's right where you're welding in this corner bracket. Um, it's not a big deal. What I've done is I went ahead and cut this little tab off. And what we'll do when we go to put the brakes in is I'm just simply going to drill and tap a hole uh, right up here in the top of the frame horn, kind of in the relative position where it was initially. And then we'll route our brake lines from there. Again, it's really not a big issue. It's just something else that needs to be accounted for when, when you're doing this job. So now that pretty much covers everything I had to do to get to this point in this project. There's still a lot of little things that need to be done. We need to get airline routing figured out and all that, but that's not important to me right now. What was most important was getting the brackets installed 
so I can get the chassis back under the car so I can get the heater figured out. So we will end up doing more on completing the actual air ride install once we get everything else figured out. I just figured since I've got them welded in, now is a good time to, to share with you what's, what's going on here. So now that you've seen what I've done, let me know what you think. Uh, I know the welding is ugly. Don't rip me on that too hard. But uh, let me know what you think about the added gussets. Was it necessary? Was it not necessary? I know it's not going to hurt anything. And again, it's plenty clear of the hind joints, so we're not going to have any issues there. For me, maybe it was a wasted step, but I sure feel a whole lot better about it. Just, just knowing we've got a couple of, a couple of extra supports in there. With that said, uh, I think that's about it. I don't really have anything else. You know, the next phase for us is to go ahead and put the chassis back under that. And well, I'll show you what happens. Uh, I'll show you what happens there in another video. But for now, I think uh, I think I'll just let you go. So anyway, if you made it to the end, thanks for watching. And uh, well, really, until the next one, I'll see you around.